Welcome to Laptop Power Wall, Episode 9, The Good, the Bad and the Ugly. In this episode, I'll explain how I decide which batteries to keep and which to discard. The reason I do this is because with recycled batteries, you just don't know what kind of life the batteries have had. Some will have been thrashed, others hardly used. For example, here's the good. 5,555 milliamp hours for the pair. Here's the bad, a measly 77 milliamp hours from that pair. And here's the ugly, which is something that's it's leaked and oozed, and um, I feel uncomfortable just holding that. Um, anyway, my plan is to first discard cells with very high internal resistance and then discard the worst capacity cells around around about um, 20 to 25 percent of the worst cells. The internal resistance um, is relevant because we use an example 2684. These two batteries here have about the same um, amp hours, so you think, normally you'd think, oh, they're, they're, uh, they're a good match, but this one is 177 milliamp hours, um, milliohms, and this one is 67 milliohms. So this has got relatively high internal resistance. So if this were used in a high current situation, like an uh, electric lawnmower, for example, Um, it would heat up a lot more than this this one here. This one would be really good. Um, also for um, electric bikes or even a car, this would be a much better cell. So even though they're the same amp hours, um, this is miles better. So the internal resistance is um, measured in milliohms as a function of how the battery was made, its chemistry, and to some extent, a little bit, how old the battery is. If you want to know more about internal resistance, I recommend googling Battery University website. The capacity, measured in milliamp hours, or just amp hours, is a function of how the battery was made, what chemistry it's made with, how many charge-discharge cycles it's had, how high the charge cycles were, whether it was ever charged over 4.2 volts or not, and how deep the discharge cycles were. So whether it was ever taken below 3 volts or even 2.7, those really affect the, the lifespan of, a, of an 18650 lithium battery. In a Powerwall scenario, lower capacity is not terrible because it, it just means you'll need more cells in parallel to achieve a, a desired capacity for the pack. Um, and in a Powerwall, pack size and weight are not critical. And on an e-bike or a, a car, on the other hand, weight is really important. So you want as much capacity per kilogram as you can get. And in that case, you might want to discard even more lower capacity cells, as many as 50%, um, in order to maximize your power to weight ratio. But of course then, uh, if you're discarding more, you have to open more, you have to process more, so it all just takes longer and longer. Okay, so if we want the highest capacity and lowest internal resistance, it's helpful to have some data. Yeah, here we go. Uh, this is a chart of 217 pairs of recycled 8650 lithium, lithium batteries that I pulled out of laptops from an IT recycler and plotted the internal resistance versus the capacity. I'm thinking of, of making an arbitrary cutoff of 150 milliohms. Anything worse than that, higher than that, 
of this card, which in, in the case of this chart is only, um, there's not very many cells at all. Um, if I was feeling more fussy, I could go down to 125 milliohms. Then, in terms of capacity, I could discard the, the lower 20%, and that would give me a pretty good, pretty good result. Uh, an arbitrary lower boundary of 25% in this batch brings me down to a threshold at 2,800 milliamp hours. If we look at this collection of batteries that I've got, um, there's 168 pairs there, up to there, that's 168 pairs. Uh, it goes from 5,555 mAh is my best cell, and we get down to 2,868 mAh for my worst cell in the top of my, my bunch. Um, 2,800 is roughly the 25% threshold that um, I was looking for in my, um, looking at in my chart. So that's in the right kind of ballpark. The mean is, um, is where it is here. 3,275 milliamp hours. What that means is that um, on average um, the pack, if you have that, if you have, so that's my mean cell, if you have that you get um, 1,637 milliamp hours notional average battery for the pack. And the pack that I'm doing is 48 cells in parallel, 7 in series. So if you take 1,637 milliamp hours times 48 cells in parallel, uh, you get 78 amp hours and multiply that by 25.9 volts, which is the nominal voltage for a 7S pack, then you end up at a grand total of 1.989 kilowatt hours, roughly a 2 kilowatt hour pack, which is what I was aiming for. I'm almost tempted to open some more laptop batteries to really get it to precisely a 2 kilowatt hour pack. I'm so close, it almost seems silly not to improve my pack to get tip over the 2, 2 kilowatt hour point, which would be quite satisfying. Should I, should I just jump in and start soldering it all together now, or open a few more? Um, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. Cheers.